this is a, a topic that is really important to me and I think I'd like to hope is really important to you as well because I really think that knowing what this is about can make a big difference. So why should we care? Well, we know that heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country. And cardiovascular disease kills over 460,000 women per year, which is about one woman per minute. Cardiovascular disease, which in total encompasses coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, hypertension, and stroke, kills more women than the next five causes of death combined. One woman in three has some form of cardiovascular disease over their lifetime. And one woman in two over the age of 40 will have cardiovascular disease. When we look at the prevalence of disease, women are somewhat protected perimenopausally or premenopausally. But after menopause, after about the age of 55, our incidence, which is about 10 years behind lagging behind men, approaches that of men. And over the age of, it's actually over the age of 75, the prevalence of heart disease in women is higher than that of his man. And it's, you know, this is a disease that's typically thought of as a male disease, typically thought of as an older disease. And clearly, we're outnumbering them. What's also important is that you look at the younger women, it's less, but it's still there. So even younger women are really at risk for this disease. As has already been said, it is the number one cause of heart disease in the country. And it's now encompassing 51%. Cancer, of which breast cancer is only a portion of this, it's about a third of it, is only 30%. Everyone, the breast cancer campaign has done a wonderful job of marketing themselves. And clearly, it's an important disease as well. But women are much more at risk for heart disease than they don't realize it. If you get breast cancer, you have a 1 in 30 chance of dying of your breast cancer. If you get heart disease, you have a 1 in 6 chance of dying of your heart disease as a woman. So I've shown that some of the key differences here, obviously, is the greater prevalence. It's really now in women over 55 years that we really need to worry. But women are less likely to be diagnosed. We as healthcare professionals don't know this as much as we should either, so we don't take the symptoms as seriously. Women themselves don't realize what their risk factors or the symptoms are. They don't think that they're at risk for it, so they come in much later in the onset of their disease process. They're often misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. If they're diagnosed, they're often undertreated. Because of that, they end up having a lot more disability from the disease. They end up having much more frequent hospitalizations, recurrent symptoms. The incidence of heart failure in women is much higher than it is in men. And they have more disability and more functional, a lower functional ability than males with this disease. And in terms of the death rates, they're more likely to die before arrival to the hospital. And the largest mortality gap is actually in the younger women. And I think it's because, again, we think of this as a, a disease of older patients. So what are the symptoms that are reported before heart attack in a woman? I'm sure you guys have already heard today, the classic kind of textbook story is crushing or substernal chest pain that radiates down the arm, up the neck. Women don't present that way. They can but they haven't read the textbook. The most common complaint in women is fatigue. Let's be realistic here. Most of the women in this country nowadays in that 50 to 60 year age group, they're all working. They have families. They have other lives and you know, hobbies outside of work. They have children. How many of them complain of fatigue? It's a very nonspecific symptom. It's something that we see all the time and we don't take seriously enough. But fatigue is the most common symptom. Sleep disturbances, shortness of breath is another big one in women. And chest discomfort is much less prevalent in women. And that's a lot of the reason why it's, un, uh, it's misdiagnosed or underappreciated by us and by even patients who don't realize that they're at risk for this. Well, the AHA has looked at this. They've done serial, actually, survey studies since 1997, every three years, to look at what are women's perceptions of heart disease. And it's interesting. When asked what the leading cause of death in women was, over the years, women have effectively now realized that the rates of heart disease, or their perception of what's their leading cause of death, has increased. In 2006, 58% of women could actually properly say the leading cause of death in a woman is heart disease. Now, this was, it was a, a mixed group of patients, but when they actually did it by ethnicity, they found that African-American patients and Hispanics in general, the awareness was not nearly as good. 
Okay, it was about to, up to about 30%. So we clearly need to work on certain ethnic populations. But when asked what their own greatest health risk, only about 20% thought it was heart disease. So although they knew that it was prevalent and it was important, they didn't think that they themselves were at risk. So awareness is improving, but clearly women still fear cancer, and specifically breast cancer, more than they do any other disease. Well, we're starting to learn things about the disease and how is it different in women. And one of it is this pathology. We talked about the symptoms. But we talk about heart disease as being blockages in one of the three main arteries that sit on the heart and give it its blood supply. Women can present with that, but more typically they present with less severe obstructive disease in these top three arteries, but more rates of what we call ischemia or low blood flow to the heart. Well, if the three main arteries aren't blocked, what is it? And it's probably it's that it's the small vessels in the heart have disease in them. Showing you a little schematic, we're now learning that in men, plaque deposits more segmentally, where you get a focal blocking that we can then fix with an angioplasty or a stent. Whereas women tend to diffuse, de deposit plaque much more diffusely. There's not a discrete narrowing that can be treated with angioplasty. And unfortunately, when these patients come in with chest pain and we do an angiogram, the arteries look nice and uniform because that plaque is now deposited circumferentially around the vessel. What you don't see is that there's a lot of plaque buried. They have smaller vessels, but it's not the discrete focal blockages that you see in men. And yet when we do stress tests on them, you can see that there are huge defects in the heart as compared to their resting images, where they're just not getting nearly as much blood flow. And a lot of that's because what we don't see on this, the angiogram looks at those three big arteries, we don't see all the small vessel disease that's present. In addition, we know that risk factors have a different impact in women. Tobacco use, for example, seems to play a much higher role in women. It's a much more stronger risk factor. Triglyceride levels and low HDL levels seem to play a much greater impact in women than they do in men. And yet a lot of our treatment algorithms all target LDL before they target triglycerides and HDL because we know that most of the studies which have looked at LDL, which have been done in men, seem to target that first. So this is all really the tip of the iceberg of what we're learning about how this di disease is different in women. What I'd like to highlight for you all is that we're just learning about the differences. We're becoming aware finally of the prevalence of this and how much of a killer it is. But there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of education and awareness for both healthcare professionals and for the community, for patients to know that they're at risk so that we can start to both prevent the disease earlier on as well as once they get to us, changing our diagnostic paradigms and our treatment algorithms and how to treat patients. Because most of our studies that we have done really have a preponderance of male patients. And something I think that the health care community is getting better at. But we really need to look at, you know, do our drugs have the same effect in our female patients over our men? And so I ask you to just take away in terms of really looking at, you know, the women in your lives, the women that take care of everything it seems like in our families that my Angelou put very well that women take care of so many things we take our responsibility of being wives being daughters being members of the community but not frequently not seriously enough do we take our own wellness to heart